Greetings, greetings, greetings to you all. Greetings. Hello, everybody. Amen. It is good to be with you another time. So we want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching from in the world. We welcome you to a time of ministry with Pastor Maureen. And Pastor Colin. Amen. Amen. Yes, we are in the house with you again. Amen, Amen. to that. Amen. And we bless the name of the Lord yes, because he is worthy to be praised. Yes, he Amen. is. Amen. He is God. He is King. And he is majesty. Amen, Amen to that. Well, we're so grateful to be with you today, and let me say good morning to you. Good morning. Guys. Amen. And we are pretty in blue today. Amen. <laughs> You're looking proper fine, lovely, as usual. Thank you. And we You're give looking pretty good yourself. Amen. I'm looking pretty good myself. So, hey, we are looking good today by God's grace. By Amen. God's grace, yes. And we appreciate the Lord for all that he is doing in our lives. Amen. Amen. And, uh, you know, there's been so much going on, as you know, around the world, and Rumors of wars mm. and wars and conflicts going on, mm -hmm. but um, right now I just want to just um, take an opportunity really to pray for the situation um, in the Ukraine. Mm. Um, there are a lot, and, and obviously the people of Russia mm. as mm. well, and um, we want to pray that there will be a resolution to this situation. Quickly. Uh, and very quickly. Mm. You know, uh, people are fleeing, they're having to flee their homes. I know there are a lot of missionaries and ministers out in the Ukraine mm -hmm. um, who are working hard and really um, praying, you know, and praying and crying out to the Lord for situations to change. Mm -hmm. um, and we just want to just um, pray for the situation um, in the Ukraine for our brothers and sisters. And we pray for the Russian people. We have brothers and sisters in Russia mm -hmm. as well. We need to pray for each one. Amen. I want to read a scripture verse from the book of Micah, chapter 4. Verses 1 to 4. Uh, I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible um, um, because we do, we're just taking the opportunity to pray for the situation in the Ukraine and for mm -hmm. the Russian people as well as the Ukrainians mm -hmm. as well. And the Bible says, But in the latter days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains, mm -hmm. and it shall be exalted above the hills and peoples shall flow to it. Yes. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and we may walk in his paths. Yes. For the law shall go forth out of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Amen. And he shall judge between many peoples, and shall decide for strong nations <coughs> or far off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall sit every man under his vine, and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. Amen. Amen, Amen. to that. Amen. So we know that our world is full of war and full of conflict. And when we see yet another story of violence and bloodshed, it can feel overwhelming. And we can find ourselves unsure how to pray. And this is especially the case when the conflict is in parts of the world that we don't have personal connection with, or when, for the, for, when the reasons for the hostility are so complex that we don't know what the best outcome would be. Mm. But whilst war is a tragic feature of this world, it will not be part of God's new world. <coughs> and one day the Prince of Peace will return and establish his kingdom once and for all. There will be no more need for weapons of war, only gardening tools for the cultivation of a peaceful world. Praise God. And we pray for a peaceful world. Mm. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. So we're going to pray uh, right now. King of kings and Lord of lords, almighty God, majesty, our war-torn world needs your perfect rule. Yes, we ask you, wonderful counsellor, everlasting father, 
to grant wisdom to those who need it, enabling them to negotiate a resolution and establish lasting peace. Mm -hmm. We ask you, Almighty God, to do what we humans cannot achieve and soften the hearts that are set on violence, leading each one to repentance. Yes. We ask you, everlasting Father, to draw near to those who are most vulnerable. Mm. May children, the elderly and the bereaved and the displaced find comfort in your eternal arms. Yes. We thank you, Prince of Peace, that in your kingdom, victory is not won through you shedding the blood of your enemies, but you shedding your blood for your enemies. Amen. Risen Saviour, our Lord Jesus Christ, we long for your return to make all things new. And we dream of the day when war will be a distant memory, when swords will be transformed into plowshares and guns into trowels and armories into greenhouses, when, when earth that has been burned with fire and watered with bloodshed will be refreshed by the rain of your presence and flow with a new life. Yes. This we ask in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. We want to encourage each other to trust God, to trust in his unchanging hand, yes. his grace yes. and his mercy amen. and his faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Many will be worried at this time. Of course. Many have families and friends mm. in the country. We know there are marches going on and protests going on, and that's great around the world. Mm. And uh, we just want to lift up the name of the Lord in this situation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray for all of God's people everywhere. Yes. God has his people in the Ukraine just like he has his people in Russia. We pray that as they pray, the, the prayer of the saints, God hears and answers. Yes our prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. So to all of my brothers and sisters around the world who have families in these conflict areas and other areas that may be wars and rumors of war, mm. we pray for you yes. and we stand with you. Amen. Amen. And we pray that the Lord's name in these situations will be glorified Amen. in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. And if you are in fear at this moment, you're concerned, you may be worried about what is going on. Remember that the Bible says that God has not given us the, the spirit, spirit of fear. fear. Amen. So let us just encourage ourselves in the word. And the best thing we can do um, while, while others are busy trying to negotiate, let us pray. Mm. Let us lift up the name of the Lord. Let's put the situation before God. Amen. If it's not for the saints of God, this world would be in a much more dire situation, indeed, I can tell you. Indeed. But because of the prayers of the saints, we need to continue to pray and seek the face of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So just remember that as we pray with, when any of these situations arise. Amen. Amen. And uh, just uh, encourage you to... Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean up to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him mm. and he will direct and make straight and plain your path. Yes. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's what we need to remember. So just felt that we needed to do that um, this morning. Amen. Amen. And, uh, you know, we serve a big God and uh, we're grateful that we can pray and that we can see his face praise in these matters. Amen, Amen to that. So, praise the name of the Lord. Well, this morning's devotional uh, thought is uh, talking about delight thyself in the Lord. Delight thyself mm -hmm. in the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. And Psalm 37, verses 1 to 4 says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. iniquity yes. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Mm. 
Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Amen. Amen. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And verse 5, I did say one to four, but let's read verse 5. <coughs> Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him. And, and he, he shall bring, bring it to, to pass. pass. Amen. Amen. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. <clears throat> now, we've all had those days, um, you know, where circumstances go from bad to worse, creating an undercurrent of fear so strong that it tugs at your hope and threatens to pull you under. But while you're trying to stay afloat on God's promises, sometimes even guilt sets in. But joy in the midst of trials is the mark of a true Christian. Indeed. And you tell yourself that. You must tell yourself that. Amen. That Amen. you have the joy of the Lord. In enters doubt with all the what-ifs that make your burden heavier. You pray and you put your trust in God. Now what? You need a distraction to ward off anxiety. And oftentimes people work, they use their phones or they binge watch or do ministry any of these should do, which sometimes people do use as a distraction. Yes. But they don't always work. Why does the call to delight yourself in the Lord seem so distant mm. in times of trouble? And yet we're encouraged to do so. Well, the word delight gives the idea of enjoyment, of pleasure, to be satisfied, and to experience a thrill and an excitement. And while Psalm 37 gives a promise, if you delight yourself in God, he will give you the desires of your heart, it is important to recognize that we shouldn't delight ourselves in God because we get something from him. Mm. We should delight ourselves in him because of who he is. Just because of him, really. Yeah, because of who he is. Of course of who he is. Not to get anything from him, not to appease him, not to for any other reason, but that he is worthy. Because God is worthy. David writes in Psalm 16 and verse 11, You will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. It is only in his presence do we discover the fullness of joy. For true joy is found nowhere else but in the one that can give us joy, mm. and that is our Heavenly Father. Amen. True delight in the Lord is a celebration of all his excellent qualities. When we're in God's presence through Jesus, we can view those qualities in person, not as a curious onlooker, but as a child captured by our Father's glory. Mm. Amen. And as we celebrate him, we can trust that the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Amen. Amen. And that's Psalm 37, 23 and 24 from the NIV. So when David wrote Psalm 37 and verse 4, he said, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Yes. He didn't just invite us to delight ourselves in the Lord. He also revealed the benefit that occurs when we do. Mm. Amen to that. So this verse in context and according to the original language means when we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our heart. The Lord will do that. Amen. In other words, when we delight ourselves in the Lord, his desire becomes ours. I think that's wonderful, don't mm -hmm. you? And to delight ourselves in the Lord, we must know him. And Jeremiah 9.24 says, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glorieth in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. For I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Amen. So God calls us to know him for several reasons. 
First, he wants us to discover his many attributes that are so worthy of delight. Amen. Mm. He also desires a relationship with us. He made us relational beings and we are made in his image. Amen. Mm -hmm. And God desires us to know him and to take great pleasure in knowing him. Amen. Hosea 6 and verse 3 says, Let us recognize, be acquainted with, and understand him. Let us be zealous to know the Lord, to appreciate and to give heed to and to cherish him. His going forth is prepared and certain as the dawn, and he will come to us as the heavy rain, as the latter rain that waters the earth. Amen. That's a beautiful passage. Love it. Knowing him is profoundly important to the nurture of our souls. Our invitation to seek him, to know him, is one of a Christian's most valuable privileges. And it's also the secret to our delight in the Lord, especially during times of distress. Mm. And David knows that if he can be where God is and see him in all his glory and seek him while he may be found, that it will lead to safety, to shelter, and the power to rise above the enemy's schemes. Yes, Amen. Yes. In the refuge of God's presence, David is given the ultimate weapon against hopelessness, the ability to delight himself in the Lord. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord, and trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. So I pray that that thought today would encourage you and inspire you. Delight in the Lord, wherever your mind may be right now, whatever is troubling your spirit. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Amen. Amen. And we bless the Lord for the devotional uh, this morning. I felt very um, led to do that this morning. It was important for us to renew our thoughts because of the times that we are now living in and just trust God and enjoy being in his presence, really. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord. Yes, we do. Father, we come to you this morning and we thank you, Father God, for what we have been able to do thus far. Yes. And Lord, we pray as your servants, Lord, that you will direct us, that you will <clears throat> be our mouthpiece, Father God. Whatever we need to say, let the Holy Spirit be the prime mover of inspiration in what we say and in what we do, Lord God. We pray for every listener, Father God, that you will reveal yourself to them through your word today. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, because we know that the revelation that you give is only you know how you can give it. Amen. amen. And so we want your word to be amen and amen as we come forward, Father God, as your servants, because we are so glad to serve, Father God. And we appreciate you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, we make no apologies. We had to take the time to pray this morning for our Ukrainian and Russian brothers and sisters. Amen. Mm -hmm. And for all people, because we just want to see the peace of God that passes all understanding to will come and affect the lives of many. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we are going to continue with our teachings uh, this morning. Pastor Moyne is coming the queen of the house, <coughs> the lady of the ministry. She is here and she will uh, speak to you regarding what she's going to be sharing about today. But we've been so blessed about the topic of the weapons of our warfare. Amen. Amen. And we have more to come. So Pastor Moyne is in the house. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Colin. Amen. Well, hello, everybody, once <laughs> again. God bless you. Amen. And thank you for watching us today. God bless you. I hope Amen. that you will be richly blessed yes. by what we have to share. Yeah. Um, as Pastor Colin says, um, we are continuing 
on this topic that we started a few weeks ago called the weapons of our warfare. Mm. Our main text is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, yeah. verses 3 to 5, the authorized King James Version. It reads, For though we walk in the flesh, we yeah. do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, Amen. casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against yes. the knowledge of God, yes. and bringing into captivity every thought to mm. the obedience of Christ. Amen. Ephesians 6, 10 to 13, the Passion Translation tells us about the warfare that we're engaged in. And it reads, now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Yes. But be supernaturally infused with strength throughout, through your life union with Lord Jesus. Amen. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power mm. flowing in and through you. Yes. Put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Yes. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities mm. operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. Amen. For they are powerful class of demon gods yeah. and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Mm. Because of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides so you're protected as you confront the slanderer, for you are destined for all things yes. and will rise victorious. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So just to briefly recap, we said that some of the weapons that we have been given are the name of Jesus, mm. the word of God. And last week we said that speaking in tongues mm. is also one of our weapons. Yes. It comes out of our spirits and it bypasses our mind. More people are speaking in tongues all over the world at this time than ever before. Mm. And the Lord is able to accomplish much by this means. Yes. If we yield our tongues to him, the Holy Spirit can effectively pray through us yes. according to Romans 8, 26 to 27, the Amplified Version. Amen. It says, in the same way, the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness. Mm. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should, mm. but the Spirit himself knows our need and at the right time yes. intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words. Mm. And he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is mm. because the Spirit intercedes before God on mm. behalf of God's people in accordance with God's will. Yes. According to 1 Corinthians 14, 2, when we speak in an unknown tongue, we are speaking mysteries. Yes. You know, there's different ways in which the Holy Spirit can lead you to speak in tongues. Yes. And sometimes he can do that. I remember the first time I ever saw this happen, but then it subsequently happened with me. But years ago, I was at a Morris Sorello crusade mm. and uh, we were praying, that we were praying, we stayed there all day. And so in between the services, in between the sessions, they had a, a, a morning session, an afternoon session, evening mm. session. So we stayed at the afternoon session. We stayed there for the whole day. And in between, we um, went to the back to pray because we were on fasting. We were actually yeah. on fasting. So some of us stayed back and we were in fasting. And while we were there, mm. we saw this man and I'd never seen it before. I saw this guy walking up and down. He had his Bible in front of him and he was praying in tongues from the Bible. It was amazing. Mm. I said, oh my goodness, look at this guy. He's obviously talking to the Lord, but he's praying in tongues and he's using the word of God to pray this powerful prayer. Mm. It really was something else. But subsequently, the Lord has, has used me mm. to do that. There's been times when I've been praying and I oftentimes, when I'm praying, I need my Bible. Yes, you do. I need my Bible mm. because I find that, you know, uh, the, the spirit knows how to lead you. And mm. oftentimes when I'm, I'm praying, if I'm praying with a group and sometimes we may have a, a topic, the Holy Spirit might tell me mm. turn to this scripture yeah. and i would turn to the scripture and there's certain things the holy spirit wants you to pray out of that scripture and sometimes you start praying in tongues about what that scripture is right. very very effective because the holy spirit knows exactly what the need is and he can pray the the, the, the direct word and the will of mm. god into that situation yeah. more effectively than we could ever pray in english from, from using our own minds Amen. praise god Amen. So if you missed any of these teachings, you can go back to them on our Time of Ministry Facebook page, our BTM Lifelight YouTube channel, mm. or our BTM Lifelight website. Mm. The details are given on, on, on the screen. On the screen. Mm. 
Uh, right, another of our weapons is the blood of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Revelations 12, 11, the Amplified Bible says, and they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the Lamb and Amen. because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith even when faced with death. Mm. Regarding the word of our testimony, we need to testify to what God has done together with our faith in what the blood has accomplished. Yes, you know, we are saved because of the blood of Jesus. You know, the song says there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins mm. and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. So mm. we lose all of our guilty stains. We are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. We are um, of the heritage of God our Father. Mm. We we have God as our Father and Jesus Christ is, uh, my, brother, my dad always used to call him Jesus Christ our elder brother. He always mm. used to say that. Yeah. And uh, you know, we have a bloodline. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That blood flows through our veins and we have access to the throne of grace because that blood was poured out to purchase our salvation. Mm. Hallelujah. But there's more that we can learn about the blood. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins it, it, and it is extremely powerful and effective. Mm. The Old Testament gives types and shadows of what Jesus came to fulfill. Mm. The account in the Exodus of the children of Israel from Egyptian slavery mm -hmm. in the last yeah in the account of the Exodus of the children of Israel from Egyptian slavery mm -hmm. the last plague was the killing of the firstborn mm -hmm. the Lord told Moses what the children of Israel were to do mm -hmm. to protect themselves against this terrible judgment mm -hmm. this account is given in Exodus chapter 12 1 oh, to 7 right, and man. we are reading it from the New King James mm -hmm. version and now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it take it according to the number of the persons mm. excuse me according to each man's need mm. you shall make your your count for the lamb mm. your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year you may take it from the sheep or mm. from the goats mm. now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month mm. then the whole assembly of the congregation of israel shall kill it mm. at twilight and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Mm. And I'm going to jump down to verse 12 to 13. Mm. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Mm. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, mm. I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Amen. Praise God. So we see that this was instituted at that particular time, and that, they, that God specified that they needed to take a lamb without blemish. Well, we know um, that this was a type of Christ, mm. because Jesus uh, became our sacrificial lamb. Yeah. You know, he was a lamb yeah. without blemish when he died upon the cross of Calvary. But this mm. was just a foreshadowing yes. of what the blood was going to represent yeah. and how it could be used for protection. So it started there. Mm. Praise God. Various people have received revelation about the protection that is available because of the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Mm. Praise God. Different people have come. They've written different books. Rebecca Brown, who, who became well known for writing, He Came to Set the Captives Free, was told by the Lord that anointing her home with oil, representing the blood of Jesus, was a way of keeping out evil spirits. Yeah. For those of you who know about Rebecca Brown, she was a, a doctor called into service yeah. to, um, to do a, a spiritual warfare. Mm. And um, the Lord led her on a very intensive eight-week course, I believe it was, yeah. where he taught her a lot of things about 
spiritual warfare and how to fight and then um he led her in a ministry of bringing people out of the occult and you know they got saved and you know there was a very intensive warfare that she learned and a lot of things we could learn from her mm. so one of the things that the lord told her was that she would get a lot of attacks from time to time when she brought people into her home there would be all kinds of evil spirits mm. coming uh, but one of the things that the lord said one of the ways to keep them out was to use the the oil mm. which was which represented the blood mm. and to anoint it on the, the various posts in the house to keep those spirits out and it did yes. it did the, the trick yes praise god we've taken this up in our home um and mm. also um you know because we sometimes have people coming mm. into our home and um so the work that we do we need to have protection yes. Praise God. And so we also do this when we go in, we, we go, uh, um, when we're going on holiday or mm. anything like that, we use it. We, we're very vigilant yes. about taking the oil and just kind of putting it around the mm. doorposts and the windows yes. in the place because you never know what people have been doing when they're, mm. they're in there and what kind of spirits they've mm. invited into that home. So we, we make a point of telling them to go and to seal those places mm. with the oil representing the blood of Jesus. Mm. So we praise God for that revelation. Amen. Uh, Billy Brim has written a book called The Blood and the Glory, in which she researched the power of the blood of Jesus and, and gives various accounts of how it has delivered people. Yes. I'm going to read to you a short extract from her book of an incident that happened to her son Chip and some of his friends when they were at college. Mm. So I'm just going to read you that because I thought it was very interesting. So... Early one morning, my mm. telephone rang. At first, I didn't recognize the high-pitched, distorted voices. Mum, mm. Mrs. Brim, they squeaked excitedly. I figured out it was Chip and his basketball player friend, Conley. Mm. They told me their scary story. The double-wide double, double wide mobile home they rented was far out in the country. Mm. The first day when the boys arrived home from school in one car they noticed strange things the doors and the windows were open mm. hair dryers and toasters were on the television and stereos were blasting mm. they thought it was someone playing a joke but when they checked with the owner no one else had a key for several days thereafter when they came home the same things were happening mm. and then came the event eventful night before they called me Chip was in his bedroom studying. Everyone else was in bed. He heard the front door slam hard. The whole mobile home shook. Mm -hmm. He got up to investigate. Then the door to Connolly's room opened wide and slammed closed. Mm -hmm. Chip asked Matt, who slept on the living room couch, Did you see that? Yes. What was it? At that, Connolly's door opened and slammed again. Mm -hmm. Then Chip and Matt saw a dark figure go out the front door, which opened and slammed shut. Matt and Chip ran to Chip's room, where they both spent the rest of the night in his twin bed. Mm -hmm. They promised never to tell anyone what they saw. Mm -hmm. Rising unusually early, Conley said to Chip, I've got to talk to you mm -hmm. about last night. Conley and Chip grew up together. Conley's parents were spirit-filled Christians too. Chip told me that when we discussed this for the book, however, that he and Conley were not living for God as they knew as they knew to at that time. Mm. Robert eventually had heard it too, for he asked, what was that all about? Conley said, something came into my room and stood over my bed. Mm. It was hooded and carried a scythe like the Grim Reaper. Oh I think he came to tell me I'm going to die. Mm. Matt cried out, oh my God. Mm. With that, the four boys took off running down the road toward a, a, a little store a mile away where they called me from the payphone. Mm. Such cases are low-level devils. Mm. They can only frighten. But this one had successfully fe succeeded fairly well. For I am certain that those macho athletic types would not have wanted the girls on campus to observe their shaking and squeaking. Mm. It's just low-level devils, I assured them. Mm. I gave them scriptures and told them how to cast out the devils. Yes. Then I instructed them further. Do you have any oil? Demons don't have to use windows and doors, but as a point of contact for your faith and as a symbol of entry into your house, 
anoint all the doors and windows with this oil and say in the name of Jesus we apply the blood of Jesus demons you cannot enter our house mm. the boys chipped in and brought oil at the store mm. then they went back to the house which they vowed on the way to the store that they would never enter again mm. and carried out the instructions in detail mm. they had no further trouble mm. and as a result of the evident power of God over the power of the devil mm. the boys started going to church Amen. isn't Amen. that amazing Amen. It's powerful. yeah that's powerful mm. you know some people would say oh well I don't believe that but the fact of the matter is that mm. these things exist and they're, they're you know poltergeists mm -hmm. you know a lot of these things that you see on horror movies mm -hmm. i used to watch horror movies but now i know better i don't do that because you actually invite demons in mm -hmm. when you do this a lot of these things are based upon real life events mm -hmm. these things actually mm -hmm. happen and some things that people have done in the past invite these mm. spirits in, but we have power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. We praise God. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, when we do this, mm. we plead the blood of Jesus over the home and we take it and we put it over our windows mm. and we put it over our doors to keep our place mm. safer so that there's no point of entry. Praise mm. God. Billy also mentions in a book, a missionary to Mexico, Mrs. C. Newsom who wrote a, a book called The Life of Faith, in which she gives various accounts of deliverance from danger by calling on the blood of Jesus. In one account, she was traveling back from town and saw a group of men sitting and drinking whiskey and were, get, were getting quite drunk. Mm. She tried to go around a different way, but one of the men spotted her and started to pursue her. As he got closer, she cried out for the protection of the blood. Immediately, the man was distracted by something else, and forgot all about her. Mm. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. On another occasion, she was entering a house when she met with a ferocious bulldog. Mm. She tried to fend it off with an umbrella, but to no avail. Mm. He grabbed her close to the knee, but she cried out for the protection of the blood, and the dog was unable to shut his his Amen. jaws. Amen. Praise God. You know, Amen. other people um, that were in the house mm. were quite surprised. They said that dog that bulldog could have torn it to pieces mm. but praise God it didn't happen mm. because of the power in the blood of Jesus amen, amen. we can draw a bloodline to protect us from any impending danger mm. Billy also references a minister in Canada brother Stevens whose meetings were having a devastating impact on the kingdom of darkness mm. on one occasion having left his children with grandparents in the US the devil began to torment brother Stevens with the thought of killing his children when he told the devil the enemy he was a liar and could not have his children the devil retorted that he could because he had put rabies in the foxes in the woods adjoining the property mm -hmm. brother Stevens called three other believers and together they agreed in prayer drawing a bloodline mm -hmm. of protection around the property yes, a yes. week later brother Stevens received a letter from his brother stating that he had been walking around the edge of the property where he found five dead foxes. Wow. Upon examination, they were found to have had rabies. Mm. My goodness. Mm. So we need the power of the blood to protect us, our households, our families, our communities, our churches, our workplaces, etc. So we plead the blood of Jesus. We, you know, we learned about the power of the blood mm. long ago and we make it a regular um, mm. regular thing we wake up in the morning and we plead Pre the blood of Jesus over Pre ourselves over our home yeah. over I plead you know plead the mm. blood of Jesus over our, our, our flat mm. over the block over the estate mm. <laughs> over over the town mm. over London you know we plead the blood mm. Because we need the protection of the blood and people that know about the blood, you know, we have been probably keeping off a lot of terrorist attacks mm. and things like that because of standing in the gap and pleading the, blood, the of, blood of Jesus over our era, over Amen. our nation. Amen. Oh, glory be Amen. to God over Amen. everything that concerns us. We plead the blood. Mm. Uh, we plead the blood of Jesus over everywhere we go, Amen. every mode of transportation that we take because, Amen. you know, things can happen. That's right. So, so we're traveling, we plead the blood of Jesus over mm. our vehicles, whatever vehicle we're, we're, we're traveling in, Amen. we plead the blood of Jesus over the vehicle. Mm. You know, Billy says that when she's going on, on airplanes and she does a lot of traveling, mm. she pleads the blood of Jesus over the airplane from tip to stern and everything. I, but I, I don't go over that. I just say, I plead the blood of Jesus over the entire plane, mm. over the entire mode of, of transportation, over the people that are traveling in the, in the mode of, of, of transportation, Amen. that we are totally safe. 
we cover ourselves with the blood because of the effic efficacy mm. of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Our God is so good and he has provided powerful weapons mm. for us to use. So once we know about these weapons, we can use them against the enemy. We can use them as protection because weapons protect you as well as attacking. Amen. It has been used for attack. Mm. They're used to, to, to fend off attack. Mm. Praise God. So mm. we can use the weapons of our warfare mm. to protect us and to help us and as and you know as you can see mm. from this situation um doing the but it was also caused to kill yeah. kill those foxes mm. praise god yes. hallelujah so we give the lord praise for that now mm. a good friend of ours prophet johnson akin fenwa has also written books on the blood of jesus and how to use it in prayer so i'm going to close by using one of the prayers taken from his book on how to use the power in the blood of Amen. Jesus. Praise God. So you can pray this prayer after me. Father, by the blood, uh, by the power in the holy blood of Jesus. Father, by the power in the holy blood of Jesus. I decree and legislate. I decree and legislate. Against the adversaries. Against the adversaries. Working to upset my breakthrough. Working to upset my breakthrough. My success. My success. And my progress. And my progress. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Also, I pray in Jesus' name. Also, I pray in Jesus' name. That doors of opportunity. The doors of opportunity shut against me shut against me be open speedily be open speedily by their own accord by their own accord by the blood of jesus by the blood of jesus i call for angelic assistance i call for angelic assistance to, to go ahead of me to go ahead of me to different nations to different nations to break into pieces to break into pieces the gates of brass the gates of brass and cut asunder and cut asunder the bars of iron the bars of iron. Releasing into my hands, releasing into my hands, the treasure of darkness, the treasure of darkness, and the hidden riches, and the hidden riches of secret places, secret places, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Amen, Amen, Amen. 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 I just, Amen. I just feel impressed. There's another short one. We're going to do that one as well. By the power in the blood of Jesus. By the power in the blood of Jesus. I demand. I demand. For full restoration. Full restoration. Of all the blessings. Of all the blessings. And inheritance. And inheritance. Stolen from my life. Stolen from my life. Stolen from my family. Stolen from my family. Stolen from my business. Stolen from my business. In the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. So we give the Lord <laughs> praise. Yes. For the power in the blood of Jesus mm. and let us use that weapon effectively to fight off any attack mm. and to keep ourselves and our families, our loved ones and our workplaces, you know, your places of mm. work, places of study safe. safe man. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Moran. Power in the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I don't have to add anything more to that. I believe that the Lord has given us what he needed us to have regarding power in the blood of Jesus. It's another tool that he has given to us Amen. as part of our warfare. Our warfare Amen. armory. Praise God. So we bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless and, the Lord. And uh, you will hear more from Pastor Moore in the next time that we are together. And uh, we look forward to that. Amen. Amen. So God bless Pastor Moore. In. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to go right back into... Uh, the teaching of Revelation, a spiritual journey. The last time that we were together, we've been looking at uh, Revelation 4, and um, we, we were talking about the seven spirits of God. We covered in great detail um, regarding that. We're going to continue with that. And um, if you have missed out on any of the teachings regarding Revelation, a spiritual journey, I would encourage you, to go to our YouTube page, which is BTM Lifelight YouTube page, and check out our teachings. They're all in a Time of Ministry playlist, so you can actually get all of our teachings on there. Amen. Amen. Um, and I'm going to continue because I started to teach regarding the number seven. So I'm going to continue um, and just uh, go back to a point that was raised and flow right back into uh, the teaching. Amen. Amen. And... Um, now, the last time that we were together, I spoke and I said, so we see 
the command for animals to be at least seven days old before being used for sacrifice. Mm. And that was in Exodus 22 and verse 30. We also noticed the command for Lepus Naaman to bathe in the Jordan River seven times to effect complete cleansing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that was in Second Kings 5 and verse 10. Yeah. And then we had the command for Joshua mm -hmm. to march around Jericho for seven days and on the seventh day to make seven circuits and for seven priests to blow seven trumpets outside the city wall. Mm -hmm. And that's in Joshua 6, uh, verses 3 and 4. Yeah. In these instances, seven signifies a completion of some kind. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been noticing. A divine mandate is fulfilled. And we also note that the series of seven things crop up often in the Bible. Yeah. For example, we find seven pairs of each clean animal mm. on the ark. Yes, Genesis true. 7 and verse 2. Yeah. We also have seven stems on the tabernacle lampstand mm. in Exodus 25, 37. We have seven qualities of the Messiah in Isaiah 11 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. We also have seven things the Lord hates in Proverbs 6, 16. Mm. We have seven parables in Matthew 13. And we have seven woes in Matthew chapter 23. Mm -hmm. So multiples of seven also figure into the biblical narrative, the 70 weeks of prophecy in Daniel 9, 24. Concerns 490 years, seven times, seven times ten. That's what it talks about. Mm -hmm. the, um, Jeremiah 29 and verse 10 predicted the Babylonian captivity would last for 70 years, yes. 7 times 10. According to Leviticus 25 and verse 8, the year of Jubilee was to begin after passing of every 49th year, 7 times 7. Mm. Jesus also told Peter to forgive a wrongdoer 70 times in Matthew 18 and verse 22. 70 times 7, sorry. And then there are passages in which the number 7 is associated with God's judgment. Mm. The seven bowls of the Great Tribulation, for example, Revelation 16, 1. Or God's warning to Israel in Leviticus 26, 18. And speaking of the book of Revelation, the number seven is used there more than 50 times wow. in a variety of contexts. There are seven letters to seven churches in Asia. There are seven spirits before God's throne in Revelation 1, 4. There are seven golden lampstands. In Revelation 1, 12, we've been through all of these. Mm. Seven stars in Christ's right hand. Revelation 1, 16. Seven seals of God's judgment. Mm. Revelation 5, 1. Seven angels with seven trumpets. Revelation 8, 2. And so on and so on. Amen. <coughs> so in all likelihood, the number seven, again, represents completeness or totality. The seven churches represent the completeness of the body of Christ. The seven seals on the scrolls represent the fullness of God's punishment of a sinful earth. And, <coughs> and that, that carries on as well. And of course, the book of Revelation itself, with all its sevens, is the capstone of God's word to man. With the book of Revelation, the word was complete. Revelation 22, 18. In all, the number seven is used in the Bible more than 700 times. Wow. If we also include the words related to seven, terms like sevenfold or 70 or 700, the count is higher. We must also remember, and we need to bear this in mind as well, that not every, inst <coughs> excuse me, not every instance of the number seven in the Bible carries a deeper significance. Mm. Sometimes a seven is just a seven. Mm -hmm. And we must be cautious about attaching symbolic meanings to any text, especially when scripture is not explicit about such meanings. We do need to be mindful of that. However, there are times when it seems that God is communicating the idea of divine completeness, mm -hmm. amen, of perfection and wholeness by the means of the number seven and there were seven lamps or torches of fire burning 
before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Mm. At Revelation 3, 1, it says, I'm to the angel of the church in Sardis, right? These things say, he that have the seven spirits of God, <coughs> excuse me, and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. So the Spirit of God in his manifold powers is here described as emblems of fire, mm. not merely as a fire of judgment. We also know that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a baptism of fire. Yes. Matthew 3, 11 and 12 says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, that's John the Baptist, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Amen. He says, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with Sorry. fire. Amen. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So the flaming presence purges the spirit from sin. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit consumes evil. It is an unquenchable fire against all evils, whether in men's hearts or in men's lives or in the world. So 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 13 says, Every man's work shall be made manifest. manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And Hebrews twelve twenty nine reminds us, For our God is a consuming fire. fire. Yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we, we give, give you praise. praise. Now, why am I reading this? Because we're dealing with this, the, the, the whole essence of the seven spirits of God. Yes. In fact, you know, when we when we look, we we, we read in Revelation uh, uh, four verses uh, uh, four and five. It said, "And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of." Goal. Yes. And of the, out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire mm. burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits, spirits of, of God. God. And that's why we, we, we had to go back and look at the number seven mm. and the reference to number seven. Yeah. Amen. And because it was speaking about fire and lamp, we know that the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, it can burn evil and sin. Amen. Mm. Praise the Lord. So, what about God's covenant with Abraham, which was ratified by fire? It said in Genesis 15 and verse 17, And it came to pass, that when the sun went down, and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace, and a burning lamp that passed between these pieces. Amen. And so we notice the supernatural torture fire went between the divided pieces of the heifer and the she-goat. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Amplified Version says, When the sun had gone down and a thick darkness had come on, behold, a smoking oven and a flaming torch passed between those pieces, which can be seen as the, the fire of the Holy Spirit. The vision of this chapter reminds us that God is ever mindful of his covenant, always. The rainbow, the token of covenant with Noah, the flaming torches, tokens of the covenant with Abraham, and the thundering and lightnings and the tokens of the covenant at Sinai are ever with him also. Mm. Ezekiel 1 verse 4 says, And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself and a brightness was about it and out of the midst thereof as the colour of amber out of the midst of the fire. And that's a supernatural fire. So the seven spirits, the greetings which comes from the Father and the Son 
comes also from the Holy Spirit sevenfold in his operations, yeah. whose gifts are diffused among all the churches and who devise to every man severally as he wills. Amen. So for corresponding thoughts in Old Testament, we can compare the seven lamps and the seven eyes of uh, in, in Zechariah 3 and verse 9. He said, For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. The Amplified Bible says, For behold, upon the stone which I have set before Joshua, upon that one stone are seven eyes or facets, the all-embracing providence of God and the sevenfold radiations of the Spirit of God. Amen. Behold, I will carve upon it its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity and guilt of this land in a single day. It really speaks about the fire of mm. the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that's power. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Zechariah 4.2 And uh, said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. Amen. And then we have Zechariah 4. In fact, we read that, uh, uh, we read that, uh, that, sorry, we just read that. Mm. Sometimes what happens is when I'm putting in the scriptures, the two tend to come up sometimes. So it's just repeating what I've just said. Mm. Amen. So apologies for that. The symbols of eternal light and all embracing knowledge. It may not be inappropriate to note that Filio speaks of the number seven in its mystical import as identical with unity as unity developed in diversity and yet remaining one. Mm -hmm. the, this unity is in diversity is uh, the thought of the Apostle Paul seems anxious to keep before the minds of the Corinthians, lest their gifts should become the source of division. All work that one and self same spirit. Here's what the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 12:11. But all these work of that one and the self same spirit, divide into every man severally as, as he, he will. Yeah. The Amplified Bible says all these gifts, achievements and abilities are inspired and brought to pass by one and the same Holy Spirit yes. who apportions to each person individually exactly as he chooses. Yeah. So, the after reoccurrence in this book of the number seven is, I think, selected to support this thought of completeness and variety. Mm -hmm. The dramatic unity is preserved through the uh, senses which are unfolded, are simply diversified. And the seven seals and the seven trumpets and the seven vials are not three successive periods but three aspects of one complete period presided over by that one spirit whose guidance may be seen in all ages in and in diverse ways. Yeah. So the spirits are before the throne. This reference to the throne gives a touch of authority mm -hmm. to, the, to the description. Right. The Holy Spirit who pleased with men is the spirit from God's throne. Yeah. Now, yesterday... This, this is just off the cuff, this just come to my mind. Yesterday, Pastor Moyne and I, we did our Bone of My Bones Marriage School of Ministry, and in it, I was covering about the authority uh, that God gives uh, the, the, the husband and the wife in the marriage relationship. And what we, 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 we noticed there is that although we God places the same value that he places on both the male and the female, mm -hmm. there are distinct roles. Mm. Amen. There are distinct gifts that God gives so that the relationship, the husband and the wife, can complement 
one another. That's right. The principle is the same when it comes to having new things. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is so diverse mm -hmm. in, 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 in its gifts and what it does for the individual believer mm -hmm. that, it, you know, um, it's not that there's loads of spirits. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, amen, who has diverse gifts and is distinct in those diversities, mm. amen. And I think we just need to, to, to understand that. I hope that makes sense. To, mm. you know, I think, I think we, we really need to understand that, that God values everything equally, but everything has its place mm. in how it functions. Amen. And that's what we need to grab a hold of. Amen. Amen. So then we had Revelation uh, 4, verses 6 to 8, which goes on to say, And before the throne there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne, and around about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Mm. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had the face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Mm. Bless the Lord. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and which is to come. Amen. So, with all of that in mind now, we're going to continue uh, with that, with Revelation uh, chapter 4, and uh, we're going to continue on our topic of uh, uh, Revelation, a spiritual journey. Amen. Praise God. Praise so God. let me remind you that before we move 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 more forward now, we mentioned Revelation four and verse five, mm -hmm. where it said, "And out of the throne proceeded lightnings, and thunderings, and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God." Yes. Amen. So. We spoke about the number seven, mm -hmm. and we observed that in heaven, the Apostle John also saw the Holy Spirit symbolized by the seven spirits of God. Mm -hmm. We also noted that there is only one spirit of God, mm. but he has many manifestations, diversities, and operations. Yeah. The number seven refers to God's completion, which is the perfect operation of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We also read, now we're going, to, and we're going to read this now, Isaiah 11 and verse 2, which gives insight into the sevenfold Spirit of God. And it says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, mm -hmm. the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of, of, of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the Holy Spirit's presence before the throne of God indicates that he has completed his earthly assignments on earth be, on, on behalf of the church which began on the day of Pentecost. So the Holy Spirit is not removed from the earth. As God, the Holy Ghost, he is always present in heaven and on the earth. Mm. His earthly assignment will continue throughout the seven years of tribulation. So we have to observe, really, when we think about the Spirit of God, that the Spirit of God only brings the things of God to us. Mm. There is no hidden agenda. We need to be reminded of that. So, with that in mind, Joel 2 and verse 28 to 32 says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Mm -hmm. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Mm -hmm. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered. Yes. 
For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Amen. So we look to that. So if you missed any of the previous teachings, as I said earlier, please go to our BTM Life Light YouTube page and you can pick up a Time of Ministry playlist and find the teachings there. Amen. Amen. And it will benefit you for you to go back there because you can get then the, the flow of the teaching of Revelation, mm. a spiritual journey. So we're going to go back now to the scripture that I, I read um, just before I came into this point, which is Revelation 4 verses 6 to 8. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass as unto a crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Well, that must have been a sigh, isn't it? Indeed. And the first beast was like a lion. Yeah. And the second beast, like a calf. Mm -hmm. And the third beast had the face as a man. Mm. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Mm. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now the Apostle John sees the sea of glass like unto crystal, before the throne. Mm -hmm. It is said that this is not a body of water or a large expanse of clear glass. Oh. Yes. Yeah, it says in scripture a description of a mass of people accompanies the word sea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what that's just a, tra a trail of thought. Okay. Because what I'm sharing with you is just trails of thought because mm -hmm. we're talking about revelation and spiritual journey. But as I give you definitions you will get you god will begin to reveal certain things to us amen so it says in scripture that uh, uh, in scripture a description of, uh, of of a mass of people accompanies the word see whenever it is used without reference to the name or location of an existing body of water mm. so i looked up the word see from the scriptures and looked at some definitions from both the hebrew greek and dictionary and the the dictionaries as well, because I like to look into these things. Mm. And the word sea, number one, is a great body of salt water that covers much of the earth. It is also seen as the waters of the earth as distinguished from the land and air. Mm -hmm. It also means an inland body of water. Mm -hmm. It could refer to rough water or a mighty river. Mm. Also, it is the great basin in the temple court. Mm which was, you know, when they had the, 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 the tabernacle in the wilderness and they'd have this basin of water that the priest would have to wash in. Mm. We're going to come to that in a moment. Okay? It also means the sea can refer to a large amount or number of something. Mm. So people would say a sea of people or a sea of food or, a sea, you know, it, 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 it means that it is large in its capacity. Mm. It can also refer to multitude, mm. host, abundance, and a mass of something, mm. okay? It ref also refers to a sea of people or things, as we mentioned, or a very large number of them together. Mm. So the crystal sea can be seen as a great company of people standing before the throne of God. That is a train of thought. Okay. Okay? Um, they are referred to as the sea because of their vast numbers and as crystal because of their right standing before God. Mm, that's an interesting thing. So it is an interesting mm. thought, isn't it, really? But then we have, since we observe that the 24 elders are representatives, then the church whom they represent must also be in heaven. Mm. And that's the trail of, that's one trail of thought. I see. Another trail of thought is um, the crystal sea before the throne can be seen as the symbol of the whole church company in heaven that's what it that's another trend of thought because crystal is the only earthly substance in which flaws cannot be hidden mm. in fact if there are any flaws then they will be magnified mm. because the crystals as you know are very clear are very clear very very clear and so we need to remember that the lord will present to himself 
um, a glorious church. Yes. Ephesians 5.27 says that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Mm -hmm. The voice translation says he has given himself so that he can present the church as his radiant bride, unstained, unwrinkled, unblemished, completely free from all impurity, holy and innocent before him. Mm -hmm. And also, we're going to be reading from Second Peter chapter 2, verses 9 to 19, and, and we read the scriptures because that's what we're about. Yeah. And we need to know what the scriptures are saying. Yeah. So Second Peter 2, verses 9 to 19, and I'm going to be reading from the easy-to-read version, it describes the spots and the blemishes within the church as those people who focus attention on themselves by declaring how spiritual they are. They attempt to develop a small following by deceiving new Christians who have a little or no foundation in the word. So here is what Second Peter 2 verses 9 to 19 says. So, you see that the Lord God knows how to save those who are devoted to him. Mm -hmm. He will save them when troubles come. And the Lord will hold evil people to punish them on the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. That punishment is for those who are always doing the evil that their sinful souls want to do. It is for those who hate the Lord's authority. Mm. I, I, I hope that you're paying attention to this. These false teachers do whatever they want, and they are so proud of themselves. They are not afraid even to say bad things against the glorious ones. The angels are much stronger and more powerful than these beings. But even the angels don't accuse them and say bad things about them mm. or about them to the Lord. But these false teachers speak evil against what they do not understand. Mm. They are like animals that do the things without really thinking. Mm, they're like wild animals that are born to be caught and killed. Mm. And they're like wild animals, uh, and like wild animals, they will be destroyed. Mm. They have made many people suffer, so they themselves will suffer. Mm. That is their pay for what they have done. They think it's fun to do evil where everyone can see them. They enjoy the evil things that please them. So they are like dirty spots and stains among you. They bring shame to you in the meals that you eat together. Every time they look at a woman, they want her. They are always sinning this way. And they lead weaker people into the trap of sin. Oh they have taught themselves well to be greedy. They are under a curse. Mm. These false teachers left the right way and went the wrong way. Oh they followed the same way that the prophet Balaam went. He was the son of Beor, who loved being paid for doing wrong. True, <laughs> a donkey cannot talk, of course, but that donkey spoke with a man's voice and stopped the prophet from acting so crazy. Because he remember he was he wanted, he wanted to curse the people of God, but God had different ideas, yeah. and he had to get donkeys to go and speak to him. Mm. Praise the Lord! These false teachers are like springs that have no water. They are like clouds that are blown by a storm. A place in the deepest darkness has been kept for them. They boast with words that mean nothing. They lead people into the trap of sin. They find people who have just escaped from a wrong, wrong way of life and they lead them back into sin. Mm -hmm. They do this by using the evil things that people want to do in their human weakness. These false teachers promise these people freedom, mm -hmm. but they themselves are not free. They are slaves to a mind that has been ruined by sin. Oh dear. Yes, people are slaves to anything that controls them. Indeed. We are living in that kind of world yes, right now. Yes, we are. People have no regard or value for life. Yeah. They have no regard or value for God. Mm. They continue to do evil, but I'm telling you, evil will come back upon them because of their evil acts. Yeah. Unfortunately, as Pastor Martin says, because that is not God's idea. Yeah. 
It is God's will that all should come to repentance and none should perish. You know, sometimes it can be a bit discouraging because mm. you can see evil going on all around yeah. you and it looks like it's not being punished and people are getting away with it. Yeah. But God has got his way of doing things. Absolutely. And, you know, certainly um, I, I listen to the prophets and I listen to the prophetic words. So, you know, we hear that a lot of things that have been happening and God is, is doing things deliberately to expose yeah. the wickedness and he's going to do something about it mm. when the time is right. Mm. When, when um, you know, in fact, I think there was one prophecy that said that when it looks like all is lost mm. that's when it's, it's going to strike and then people will know for a fact that it's God absolutely you know that it couldn't be any other human being that's right. um, and uh, you know so God knows exactly what he's doing absolutely sometimes it, as I said it can be discouraging you mm. see things and you see well, why are people getting away with it and then you mm. you can think that you know they're, 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 they're mm. just evil is being is, is being rewarded mm. but true. not in the eyes of God God yeah. knows exactly when to strike and what to do and how to get things back the way he wants it so Amen. we have to try him. And that's the point, and I believe that's the point of revelation mm. that God wants us to trust Him. Yeah. That in the midst of the, the tribulations and anything else that has to go on, mm. God is still God. God is God. This is where God will show Himself strong yes, yes. on our behalf. Yeah. Amen. But we're going to learn more about that in our, in our journey through that through the Book of Revelation. Yes. Amen. So the sea of glass that we mentioned in Revelation um, chapter four is an extraordinary mystery. Okay. It is said that the book of Revelation has more Old Testament symbolism on verses and metaphors and facts than any other book of the Bible. Mm. So when we talk about a sea of glass, we are talking about things that are in heaven. Mm -hmm. And we see things as it were right now, as in a glass dimly. Mm. We see just enough. Yeah. So we are going to see the reality of it all, and all these things represent God's eternal truth, of course, but they are copies and they are types and symbols given to us, <coughs> excuse me, in the New Testament scriptures, in, in the New Testament scriptures, amen. amen. So there is the reality, and John is seeing that reality. Imagine being in John's shoes and just seeing all these Amazing. things happening in the heaven. What a, what a sight. What a sight, I'm telling you. But my beloved brothers and sisters, we are going to be in awe of what heaven is. Mm. Amen. What is there and being in the presence of God Almighty and being in the presence of Jesus along with everyone else, it's going to be such a time, mm. such a wonder and such an awe. But we know that judgment is soon coming upon the earth. Yes. And we notice what John sees in heaven and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal mm -hmm. so what's important about this mm. okay well what God showed Moses regarding the tabernacle and the menorah now the menorah menorah was a, a candelabra with seven or nine lights that is used in Jewish worship mm -hmm. so just in case you didn't know what the menorah was okay and also then um, the showbread, the Ark of the Covenant, the cherubim on top of the mercy seat, the Ten Commandments inside and along with Aaron's rod and, and, and the manna, all these things that were with the children of Israel in the Egyptian or Judean wilderness, and even as they crossed over from Jordan River, they carried it with them until there was a home for it, meaning the temple in Jerusalem. Mm. All of that the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, was a type or a symbol or a shadow of that which is in heaven. Mm. So, Hebrews 8, verses 1 to 6 from the Amplified says this. This is Hebrews 8. Now, the main point of what we have to say is this. We have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. Mm -hmm as officiating priest, a minister in the holy places, in the true tabernacle, which is erected not by man, but by the Lord. Mm -hmm. For every high priest is appointed to offer up gifts and sacrifices, so it is essential for this high priest to have some offering to make also. Mm. If then he was still living on earth, he would not be a priest at all. For there are already priests who offer the gifts in accordance with the law. Mm. 
but these offer service merely as a pattern and as a foreshadowing of what has its true existence and reality in the heavenly sanctuary. Mm. For when Moses was about to erect the tabernacle, he was warned by God saying, see to it that you make it all exactly according to the copy and the model which was shown to you on the mountain. Mm. But as, as it now is, he, Christ, has acquired a priestly ministry which is as much superior and more excellent than the old, mm. as the covenant, the agreement of which he is the mediator, the arbiter, and the agent, is superior and more excellent because it is enacted and rests upon more important, sublime, sublimer, higher, and nobler promises. Mm. So what it's really teaching us is that the Old Testament, when you think about the tabernacle in the wilderness, they were symbols and shadows of what was to come. Yes. And that's what, we, that's what the, 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 the writers are actually saying. And it yeah. makes a lot of sense, because yeah. when you actually look back at some of the scriptures, you get a clear picture yeah. of where Revelation is coming mm. from. And that's why we're saying that, you know, Revelation, a spiritual yeah. journey. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, time is going, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just mention a couple of more points, and we're going to continue with this, because I'm telling you, we have to get into the heart of the word, mm. amen. And I have to be honest, when I'm, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm studying this and the Lord is, is pointing out certain things to me, I'm, I'm like, wow, you know, mm. um, because I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the study, but I'm enjoying the sharing and I'm praying that God will reveal to you, amen, what he has revealed to me, Praise amen. So as we are looking at types and shadows or foreshadows about what about, foreshadows what about this sea of crystal or this sea of glass well this is most significant when we're looking at types and shadows the bible tells us in exodus uh, chapter 30 um, speaks tells us in exodus 30 which speaks about the sea or the basin of water before the throne this is 19 verses 19 to 21 it says for aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not, or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord. So they shall wash their hands and their feet that they die not, and it shall be a statue for ever to them, even to him and to his seed, throughout their generations now what this is saying is that is in the wilderness before the tabernacle there was a big brass laver when we spoke about the definitions remember that past mm. one this was there was a big brass laver um which 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 is in um defined as a basin filled with water mm -hmm. it was also referred to as the sea and before someone could meet with the Lord, that person had to wash their hands and their feet before they went in. Okay. Okay, even before there was a ceremonial process. But right before they entered into the presence of the Lord, they had to wash their hands and feet. So you need to keep this in mind. And that is what God said that you must do. If you don't do it, he says, you are going to die. Mm. So, what do you think Aaron and his sons were faithful to do? Well, they were faithful to wash their hands and their feet because they were instructed to do so. Mm. So, when you now look at Exodus 40 and verse 30 and 32 from the Amplified Bible, it tells us, And Moses set the laver, which is the basin, between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing. Mm -hmm. And Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet. When they went into the tent of meeting or came near to the altar, they washed as the Lord had commanded Moses. So as we go back now to Revelation 4 and verse 6, and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. This, and these, are, these are trails of thoughts of what scholars are talking about, okay? This is very important that we understand that. So, the laver on earth was filled with water, 
and we are commanded to wash. But in heaven, the sea of glass is solid before the throne of God. You can walk on it. It's transparent. It's beautiful. In the Old Testament, the laver or the basin was filled with water for the cleansing of the man who was to approach the law, mm -hmm. the, the Lord. Amen. But in heaven, what was once the basin or laver or sea of water is now solid glass like crystal. Mm -hmm. And what this shows is that there's no more cleansing in heaven. No more battles with sin. No more need to confess to the Lord um, anymore, you know, the Lord anymore about our mm. wrongs. Amen. There is nothing to confess because the sinful nature is gone. Mm. It has been removed. And that is the only way by rapture or by death that the sinful nature is removed. You have already been washed. Mm. Amen. John sees a sea that is no longer in use. Mm. It is. It has been perfected by what? As you spoke about earlier, the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm. All those in heaven are free from guilt and free from sin, and you can have that as well if you are willing to enter into that with faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen to that. Hallelujah. So we get a picture here that there are trails of thought about the sea of glass being this elaborate glass mm. crystal floor. Mm. Amen. Yes. Where everything is transparent. Mm. The blood of Jesus has already cleansed us. Mm. So where the priests would have to wash their hands or wash their feet, that's, the, no, no, that's no, no longer necessary, necessary because the blood of Jesus has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Now I'm going to stop there at this time. We're going to continue next week with the four beasts. Amen. But those are trails of thought, but they make a lot of sense. Mm. Because when you actually combine them and you look at them, you get a sense that things have already been settled in our lives through and in the blood of Jesus. That's right. Because Christ has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. So that when, we, when we're in heaven, we're already cleansed. Amen. And there is nothing to trouble us anymore. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. It's all complete. All complete. Praise and that's God. why I love the book of Revelation because this, you know, we're, we're, we're all striving to make heaven our home. Mm. I look forward to that. Amen. Mm. And I'm sure you do too. Mm. Amen. So next time that we are together, we're going to continue on the trails of thought. And also we're going to be looking at uh, what John saw, which was the four beasts, amen? amen, and just get a little bit more from the Old Testament of the foreshadowing or the shadow of things that were to come. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> amen. Amen. So, quite detailed, but yes. when you go back and listen to it again, you know, sometimes I do that, but when I'm listening to messages, I will go back over it again. Like when I read a book, I do the same thing. Okay. I go back over it so that I can I need get to, it in again. Yeah, and get it in Cement again. It. And then sometimes you get even more better revelation mm -hmm. <laughs> when you do that Seven as well. Time, yeah. Amen. So we bless God. Amen. Amen. Now we want to say to those of you who are watching today, uh, and if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, you can come to know him right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. We want Amen. to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. The Bible reminds us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And because of that, because he is the way, he is the path to the Father, and we cannot be misled. Amen. Amen. And as the truth is the reality of all of God's promises. Amen. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. And we need to understand that he came that we may have life. And that we may we may have it more abundantly. Yes. And if you want to have that abundant life with Christ, just repeat this prayer after me. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, a sinner. I acknowledge my need of you. I acknowledge my need of you. And I repent of all my sins. And I repent of all my sins. And I ask for forgiveness. And I ask for forgiveness. I accept you as my Lord. I accept you as my Lord. My Savior. My Savior. My Redeemer. My Redeemer. And my Deliverer. And my Deliverer. Fill my heart with your love. 
to my heart, Lord. Your joy, your, joy, your, peace, your peace, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, invite you now I invite you now to be Lord of my life. To be Lord of my life. Thank you. Thank you. For taking me as I am. For taking me as I am. Amen. Amen. And amen and amen. If you said that prayer, I want to say to you right now that heaven is rejoicing over you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And we rejoice with heaven over you. Amen. Do contact us by coming going to our website, btmlifelight.co.uk, and uh, message us and we'll get back to you so that we can help you in your newfound faith. Amen. Some of you may be coming back to the Lord. Other things may have been happening in your lives. But you can contact us at btmlifelight.co.uk. And got UK. Amen. Mm -hmm. We bless the name of the Lord and we want to appreciate all of you who are watching with us uh, today. Amen. Mm -hmm. Pray that the teachings have been a blessing to you and we look forward to seeing you next time. Do you have anything to say? Yeah, yeah. I'd just like to encourage you to sow into the ministry. We would, we really would appreciate your help to support us, to help us to, to do a yeah. better job at spreading the word because the Lord has given us a commission to spread the word and to get it into, you know, as many people as possible and mm. to help. And um, there's things that we need to do. There's things that we need to, uh, we need the funds to do that. So uh, as the Lord leads, do help us out. Yeah. Um, you can go on our website, uh, www.btmlifelight.co dot uk the, the instructions are there and go onto the um donate tab mm. and contribute to the ministry so god bless you and thank you amen well we bless the lord for another uh, sunday and um i'm telling you, i'm just blessed for what the lord is doing amen. amen but do listen to the teachings over and over again because god wants us to receive his word today amen, amen. and remember to share 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 because somebody out there needs to hear this word. Praise Amen. God. Well, the Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you, and the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, and keep you in perfect peace. So until next time, stay, stay blessed, blessed, stay, stay focused, focused, and stay, stay safe. safe. Bye for now. Bye for now. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, share, 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 share. The Lord will bless you real good. Bye for now.